Good evening, and welcome back to Lamb's Cryptoverse. Today, I want to talk to you about derivatives leverage. Uh, I was pretty certain about lots of data coming out in the crypto community, inclu including sentiment data and options data. But the futures data was not aligning. But recently, uh, Glassnode put out some data on futures and options data, and now it's everything's coming clear. So I just want to go over that with you. Then I want to focus on Ethereum. I think there's rampant speculation in Ethereum. And if Bitcoin declines or even stays flat, you could still see a rapid decline in Ether. And I'm going to show you why. Let me just show you my screen here. I'm going to go to the screen here. This is the one I looked at earlier. This is the estimated leverage ratio coming from uh, crypt, crypto quant, and it, it just didn't make sense. It's at nearly an all-time high at 32% leverage, and I have my, my pointer on it. You could see it's um, the leverage is at 32.2%. And that just didn't make sense when you read about what's going on with the demise of three hours, three hours capital, issues with DeFi lending and borrowing, the bankruptcy of Celsius, and the list goes on and on, right? Some crypto exchanges like Voyager have gone bankrupt. So this intuitively tells you that leverage should be very low, like what you're here seeing back here. It should be more like 20%, or even what we had in December 21, like 17%. But we're not seeing that. But as I said recently, Glassnode put out, I have to be honest, more interesting and better data on leverage than CryptoQuant. So let's focus on Glassnode. So the first chart I want to show you is, uh, we're just going to be focused on options. Options open interest. And if you look at this, the red line and the blue line, they're not as high as they were previously. And if you go back, especially with the blue line is Ethereum. Let's focus on Bitcoin. Bitcoin's not as high as it was in the past. So that's different from what we're seeing here with the leverage ratio on all exchanges. So there is a difference. So what we're seeing from Glassnode, which I think is better information, is that there's lower leverage, less leverage in Bitcoin. And so that's a good thing, but it's not at a capitulation level. And that's what I said before. We're not seeing capitulation in equity markets or crypto markets. Now, the focus of today's presentation actually is not on Bitcoin, it's on Ethereum. I think Ethereum is being set up to have a massive decline if Bitcoin prices decline. So remember, everything's correlated to Bitcoin. So all we need is a little decline in Bitcoin and you're gonna see Ethereum fall off the cliff. And here's why. If you look at this blue line here, it's at an all time high practically. It's near an all time high. And that's a problem because here you can't really tell what this means. It's saying options open interest, the blue line is near an all time high. But what does that mean? Is that bullish or bearish? Well, we're going to go to another chart from Glassnode that actually answers that question. This chart here shows option open interest by strike price and whether it's call options or put options. And this is very important. So if you see here in this, I'm not sure what color this, you would call this, I would call it teal, like a greenish, bluish color. You could see there's massive, not even large, but massive call options. And these call options are at prices above the current price of Ethereum. So that's very important to know that. Number one is massive open interest. Number two, the open interest is in call options. And number three, those call option strike prices are way above the current price of Ethereum. That's very bad. And if you look at um, the purple, the light purple, that's the put options. And that you, obviously you could see fewer put options than there are call options. That's, that's a very, very bad sign. Because remember, this is a contrarian indicator. And if you're looking at contrarian indicators, uh, the opposite usually happens. So in this case, everyone and their mother is buying out of the money call options. So that means that everyone's sitting on the same side of the seesaw, right? And so basically from the contrarian point of view, 
there is huge risk if things don't happen the way investors want them to do, want them to happen. And what investors want to happen is their expectations of the merge. And here I'm going to focus on this now. This is implied volatility. And what you've seen is a smile. I'm going to go back to here. This is where I was wanting to look at September. Everyone's focused on the merge. The merge is supposed to occur, supposed to occur around September 15th, something like that. But remember, the merge, I'm going to highlight the story here. The merge and the associated difficulty bomb were delayed five times. And that's what I've got highlighted here. So that's a problem. Let me let me explain the difficulty bomb the, and the merge. The merge is when the Ethereum moves from proof of work to proof of stake. The problem is some miners are going to refuse to do that. They're going to refuse to stop mining. So what the difficulty bomb does is like it, its name implies, it makes it more and more difficult and more and more unprofitable for Ethereum miners to mine Ethereum. So they're not going to, they're going to, not going to bother, they're just going to stop mining Ethereum. That's why they call it the Ethereum merge and a difficulty bomb. So the problem is, I'm repeating myself, but it's very important that I do. It's that this has been delayed five times and that this, it's not assured that by this date here, by, by September, that the merge is going to go through or the shift from proof of work to proof of stake. But according to uh, in investors, it's going to go through. And how do we know that? Because I said earlier, they, they're buying lots and lots of call options. And they're not just buying it in a disciplined way. They're buying it very aggressively. And how do I know this? It's called the options implied volatility smile. Basically, in other words, another way of saying that is they're paying up for these options. And that's what the smile is shown. That when you go to higher prices, investors are paying up more. And you 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 could look you could see the price of that implicitly by looking at what's called implied volatility. And implied volatility is way, way over hundred percent. You want it to be around well, well maybe for cryptocurrency, you want it to see around hundred percent or below. But if you're looking at these options here, going going out at these higher prices, they're paying 140, 150, 160, 170, could, do I see 180% implied volatility, volatility. So they're paying stupendous values for these call options. That, so that confirms that there's rampant speculation in Ethereum call option buying. So this is a very bad thing. And just to confirm what I said earlier, these investors are looking for the merge to go through in September. And, and I, I can confirm that because if I look at the futures term structure, it's what you call backwardation. Now, if you look at Bitcoin, it's the opposite. Bitcoin's futures prices are in the future are higher than they are now. So in other words, if you buy a futures for, the, you know, uh, for September or October, those prices of a Bitcoin are higher than they are for today's spot prices. But that's not the case for Ethereum. In Ethereum, you see here, I've got it, I'm highlighting it here. You've got August 2022 futures prices are at $1,700, but they're priced lower for in January 2023 at $1,660. So yes, the Ethereum prices are not much lower for January 2020, 2023 as they are for August, but they are lower, indicating that these call options buyers fully expect to the merge to go through in September. So God forbid the merge is delayed again, you're going to see a sharp drop in Ethereum prices. So that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. I know it's kind of complicated because we talked about a few things. So I'm going to go over it once again. Number one, we talked about how options uh, and futures leverage is high, but not as high to, as it looks like in crypto quant, but it's not at capitulation levels. So I'd say we're at normal levels of uh, options leverage and futures leverage. However, when it comes to Ethereum, that's not the case. We're at the highest levels 
of option speculation in Ethereum. And how do I know that? Once again, we see a lot of call option buying and these call option buying is at high strike prices. And we're seeing um, uh, the change in term structure of the futures curve in Ethereum. And lastly, we're seeing high levels of open interest in Ethereum. As a matter of fact, we're at all-time high, or we're at near all-time high levels of open interest for Ethereum. So almost at every metric for Ethereum, we're seeing rampant speculation. And remember, Ethereum prices are up over, I don't know, 50% in the last month or so. So we have nowhere to go but down in Ethereum prices if Bitcoin declines even slightly. So that's all for today. Uh, please hit the like button if you like this and subscribe. And uh, please look at the other videos I did on, on futures leverage and options leverage and uh, Bitcoin pricing and term structure. There's, I have a lot of videos on this so you can educate yourself and get more comfortable with it because I know it's a lot to take in on, on within 10 minutes. Thanks again. Bye-bye.